Today I'm going to talk about six critical solutions to water scarcity and food insecurity. With the world population forecast to grow rapidly until 2050, there is growing concern about whether we will be able to grow enough food to feed everybody. Just where the water will come from to do this is uncertain given current levels of water scarcity. Additionally, difficulties will arise because of increasing demand for water to grow biofuels from growing cities and for environmental uses. We also have to consider the impacts of climate change on water resources. These impacts are potentially negative for many of the developing countries where more food production will be needed most. Forecasts suggest that we will need about twice as much water as we have now to grow the required food to feed 9 billion people. Recent scenarios of water supply and demand in India, China, South Africa and even in parts of Brazil have demonstrated a looming gap between supply and demand in as little as 30 years. This will be a recurring pattern for many areas of the world. It is apparent that agriculture, which uses about 70% of available water worldwide today, will have to make do with less water in 40 to 50 years' time. So we have a paradox of growing much more food but having substantially less water to do so. However, these scenarios only apply if we continue to have a business-as-usual approach to water use. In reality, we can do much better and can overcome the very low levels of water productivity we see in much of the developing world. Many countries will not be able to afford to import more food. Similarly, food-producing nations will not want to nor always be able to continue providing emergency food aid. Consequently, a business-as-usual approach in agriculture spells trouble. We must learn to produce more crop per drop. Whilst many African countries have sufficient water resources to increase food production, they are limited by barriers to access and other factors such as degraded soils. These have to be tackled through investment in infrastructure and in research. In Asia, there simply are no more land and water resources available for significantly expanding the area under agriculture, so the main option is to increase productivity. IMI spends a lot of time researching how water can be better governed and managed. Given the complexity of water governance and management, and the competition for water resources, our work is based on a holistic approach. This starts at the river basin level and considers all users from the water source to the sea. Our research points to six comprehensive solutions. These are, one, better water measurement, because if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. Secondly, reforming water governance systems, because better governance defines who has rights to water, identifies better allocation processes, and exemplifies how pricing can be used to increase efficiency and reduce demand and how institutions and markets are organised to facilitate these processes. Thirdly, viewing agriculture as part of the environment is critical. Agriculture can be managed to reduce land degradation and safely clean up wastewater, thus providing ecosystem services that benefit everybody. Fourthly, Revitalising agricultural water use is really critical because productivity can be doubled in many agricultural systems given better management and inputs. Fifthly, better, better management of urban and industrial demand because cities can significantly reduce their water demands by wastewater recycling and technological innovation. Sixth and finally, empowerment of the poor and women in water management because the poor are often ignored in government programs and women are often the farmers in many smallholder systems. Thus, we have to find new ways of helping these groups foster innovation in water management to improve their livelihoods. These six solutions vary in difficulty, but collectively they will facilitate success in meeting the challenges of water scarcity and food security. In my view, managing water more efficiently and productively is one of the biggest challenges facing humanity today. This is Colin Chartres at IMI.